gonna start by following up with what I was doing in the last video. Over the last couple of nights, I've had a bout of insomnia, which I get every now and again. After giving it a couple of revs, it actually died. Crack on with some body work. Yeah, she's looking pretty sharp. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today I've come round to my other garage in Lenny, my beautiful girlfriend Kat's Ford Focus. Now I'm just waiting for my neighbour to finish doing what he's doing round here. He's got his generator running and uh, yeah, when he gets out of here, I'll pull Heidi out and I'm going to start by following up with what I was doing in the last video. Definitely go and check that out if you haven't already because um, yeah, it was a big one for Heidi because uh, yeah, she's now alive sort of now i'm actually absolutely knackered today over the last couple of nights i've had a bout of insomnia which i get every now and again but to be honest i need to take responsibility for it because uh, i do regularly sit up late working because i do live a very busy life but yeah last night i literally didn't get any sleep i'm literally running on caffeine today i was laying in bed struggling to sleep and it got to like half four in the morning and i thought you know what if I get asleep at half four or five, then it's just gonna wipe out the whole of today. So I decided to stay up until six and then start going through my daily routine that I do every morning, you know, which involves going for a walk around the block, uh, meditating, having a workout, having a cold shower, etc., etc. And then I dived into a load of work that I needed to do at home, including officially launching the latest two designs at petrolheadstyle.com. We've now launched collections of clothes clothing and other cool products that feature artwork inspired by the Renault 5 GT Turbo and the Peugeot 205 GTI. So head over to petrolheadstyle.com to check those out. If you're already on our mailing list, definitely check your inbox for a discount code that you can use on the new products. And yeah, spread the word amongst any friends that you've got that are into Renault 5s or Peugeot 205s. Now, while we're on the subject of Petrolhead Style, actually, one of the designs that we released is the Cozy Power design. And I wanna do some similar collections for Pinto engines and Crossflow engines, maybe even do like a ZTEC Turbo one or something. So I'm looking for some really decent pictures that my artists can use to draw up the designs, right? I'm looking for quite specific specs, you could say, for a Pinto and Crossflow. So uh, yeah, let me quickly talk you through what I'm looking for. And if any of you guys have got anything that semi fits the bill, please email any pictures of your engines over to my email address. If I do use your picture, then once we get the products made, I'll send you some, some free products with those designs. So I'm looking for a Crossflow and a Pinto, preferably on an engine stand, because you can see more of the engine when it's on an engine stand than you can if it's in an engine bay. I'd like a cross flow with a blue or a grey block, but with a black standard rocker cover with a set of twin webbers hanging off the side of it. And the angle I would like is from the front, from slightly above, so sort of diagonally from above and diagonally from the carb side of the front, if that makes any sense, just so that you can get a good view of the carbs. Um, yeah, of the whole engine, preferably an engine on a stand with the alternator on it and, you know, the thermostat housing and, you know, the alternator belt, you know, as complete as it would be sitting on a stand. And yeah, that would be ideal, you know, something with a blue block and a black standard rocker cover. And similarly for a Pinto engine, obviously it will be diagonal from the other side of the engine because on a Pinto, the carbs are on the other side. So yeah, diagonally from the front carb side of uh, a Pinto engine, you know, slightly sort of looking down from above as well. Um, again, with a gray or a blue block, but with a black standard type rocker cover with a set of, you know, twin 45s or twin 40s hanging off the side of it. Again, you know, complete with the uh, thermostat housing and the alternator and the alternator belt fitted. So yeah, if you guys have got any engines at the moment on the stand, or if you've got any really decent pictures of your engine on the stand before you fitted it to your car, yeah, just ping over any pictures you've got to my email address. And as I say, anyone, 
that provides a picture that we actually use, I will send you a load of free products. Anyway, with that being said, I'll wait for my neighbor to finish doing what he's doing, and then we'll crack on with doing some bits on Heidi. All right, so in the last video, you would have seen that we got this 1300 crossbow lump fired up for the first time, but the fuel pump didn't seem to be working. I was able to keep it running by pouring fuel into the carb, but even though I was turning it over for ages and I had it running for ages by putting the fuel in the carb, I just wasn't able to get this mechanical fuel pump to suck the fuel up from the jerry can that I had on the floor down there. I did, towards the end of the video, also have a bottle up here instead with the uh, fuel hose going into it, but yeah, nothing I tried would make this fuel pump work. And loads of you guys have been in touch since the last video to give me some advice about this fuel pump, so massive thanks to each and every one of you. Now, I can't for the life of me remember the guy's name that gave me this fuel pump, apologies for that, but a lot of you guys were saying in the comments of the last video that these have a diaphragm in them and you can just replace the diaphragm in them. And I'm guessing uh, you need to remove those bolts that are going around the top there. Uh, I can see some sort of seal or gasket in there as well. So yeah, it looks like these things are serviceable and you can just replace the diaphragm. But a few of you said that before I start whipping it off and looking at changing the diaphragm, I should actually try and prime the pump by pouring some fuel into it. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. This is the fuel hose that goes into the fuel pump. This would normally be hooked up to the fuel hose that's coming from your tank, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm basically gonna try and get some fuel into this hose. And I was scratching my head a bit, thinking, you know, how am I gonna get the fuel into that hose? Because I don't have a really small funnel here. But what I did find in my garage is this syringe, which should be perfect. Now it's got duct tape on it, and I think that's because whatever I used this for before, it caused it to leak. Yeah, because, uh, you know, these aren't designed to be used with fuel or whatever um so yeah there's a seal in there that's obviously started leaking so um yeah hopefully this will work enough fingers crossed first things first i hooked up heidi's battery then i disconnected the fuel hose from the back of the filter and put it into a small bottle i grabbed a syringe full of fuel from the jerry can and injected it into the fuel hose that's going into the fuel pump on the very first turn of the key, the fuel pump spat the fuel into the bottle. Result. So I repeated the process a couple of times, and then I set up the small bottle as the fuel feed and lent it on the cross member, and then I was able to see the fuel pump working continuously, just how it should. I hooked the fuel pipe back up to the fuel filter, and then turned the engine over again, and once the fuel filter was full of fuel, it started dumping the fuel into the carb, and then eventually the engine fired up. But there was a problem. The fuel pipe coming out of the filter was leaking. Once the Jubilee clip was tightened, the engine was running without any leaks, but it seemed like tweaking the idle mixture screw wasn't actually changing how well the engine was running. After giving it a couple of revs, it actually died. But then once I'd restarted it, weirdly, I was then able to tweak the idle in the normal manner and actually got it running pretty sweet. All right, well, I'm calling that a big success. Massive thanks again to everyone for your advice. And yeah, what a result. Didn't even need to remove the fuel pump. All I needed to do was prime it with some fuel. If only I thought of that the other day. <laughs> yeah, I just love how easy these little carbs are to get running right. At first, I thought there might be an air leak because I wound the speed screw out so far that it wasn't actually touching on the mechanism and it was still revving quite high. But then once I'd revved it, it sort of, you know, died basically, the revs went right back down. So I don't know if when I initially started it, maybe this choke mechanism might have been uh, on or something. I don't know, I'll have to look back at the footage when I edit this video. But yeah, essentially you just wind out the idle mixture screw, which I think leans it. So you undo that 
and whilst the revs go up and then when the revs stop going up you wind this screw out the speed screw to bring the revs back down again and then see if you can increase the revs with um, the idle mixture screw again and you basically get the idle mixture screw to the point where it's not making the revs go higher anymore and then you just wind it back in about half a turn just to, to richen it just so that it's definitely not running too lean and i think if we now count how many turns out this mixture screw is, obviously I'll put it back where it is in a minute. Um, so half one and a quarter. So it's one and a quarter turns out is where it wants to be. I'll just put it back there. And I think that means that the idle jet is slightly too big. I think ideally that mixture screw should be between one and a half and two turns out if the jet is the right size. But, you know, it being one and a quarter turns out instead of one and a half turns out isn't a big deal at all. It's somewhere in the ballpark. The other thing is, of course, we haven't accurately set the ignition timing with a timing light. So, you know, that can affect the, the revs and stuff as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, for an initial 10 second MH tune, she's running pretty sweet. Now, admittedly, I am running out of energy a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's given me a bit of a boost. So I'm gonna stay around there for a bit longer and crack on with some bodywork. It was time to attack Heidi's A and C pillars to get all the old primer off and to get any surface rust out of the rain gutters. Once the wire brush on the drill had done its thing, I grabbed my hoover, which has a blow function if you move the pipe from here to here. It's not as good as an air compressor, but this is definitely going to come in handy in the future. Here you can see the joint where the A-pillar meets the roof, which was brazed from the factory. I didn't have any panel wipe, so I decided to use white spirit to clean the bare metal, which should be alright because it'll have time to go off before I put the primer on. I grabbed the rust converter, and to save waste in a paintbrush, I poured it into the rain gutter and then just spread it along with a rag. With the weather being so good, the rust converter started changing colour almost instantly and once I'd got the rain gutter in the other three pillars to the same stage, I set about bare metalling the outer faces of both rain gutters and I decided to do it by hand to avoid slipping with the DA and causing any disasters. At this stage, I decided to key up the areas where I'd used the rust converter then I chucked a load of masking tape about. Then it was time to apply the Kent Europe epoxy primer after using the tack rag, of course. Because I hadn't fully masked the whole car up, I used this wooden board to stop any overspray going anywhere I didn't want it. And I gave all the areas two coats. The primer got a chance to dry a bit whilst I was packing my tools away. And then I pulled away the masking to reveal my work including the runs. I originally planned to do a lot more on the C-pillars than I actually ended up getting done, but I was glad that I at least got into the rain gutters themselves. Considering I was running on zero hours sleep, I was quite chuffed with what I'd achieved. It was then just a case of staying awake for the half hour drive home. Hello, so it's been a couple of days since the last clip and it's now the day before the Ford show at Santa Pod and I'm planning to put this video out today. So if you are going to the Ford show tomorrow, definitely come and see me on my stand. We're on plot number 11 in the orange zone and uh, yeah, I think we've got something between 35 and 40 cars that are gonna be joining me on my stand. So really looking forward to that. Now, if you're based anywhere near Watford in Hertfordshire and you want to convoy with us to the show tomorrow we're meeting at South Mims Services which is Junction 23 on the M25 at 7am so um, yeah feel free to meet us there and convoy with us to the show if not I'll see you at the show and for anyone that does come and see us on my club stand my beautiful girlfriend Kat has been slaving away in the kitchen today knocking up some MH cupcakes which are free for anyone that wants one 
but when they're gone, they're gone. Now, the evening of the day that I was working on Heidi that you saw earlier in this video, I slept like a baby, <laughs> no surprise. And I wouldn't recommend that <laughs> anyone goes without sleep, um, but yeah, it has kind of helped me get back into a rhythm. And yeah, since that day, after I had <laughs> that sleep that night, I have been keeping super busy, you know, keeping the empire running <laughs> with all the behind the scenes stuff. But I've also taken the axle apart again on Esther, my ST170 powered Mark 1 Escort. And this time I've put it back together with a load of the Cine gasket from my friends at Kent Europe on the rear wheel bearings. So fingers crossed, that will mean that Esther will remain leak free so that I can run her down the quarter mile tomorrow at Santa Pod. That sealer has had over 24 hours to set already. So yeah, by tomorrow it should be fully set. But yeah, as well as that, what me and my beautiful girlfriend Kat have been up to just now is giving Esther a wash ready for the show tomorrow. And we gave Lenny, Kat's focus, a wash while we were at it as well. Yeah, I just literally poodled the car round from the garage where I store it close to my home. So um, yeah, there's no risk of any oil leaking past that sealer that I put on the rear wheel bearings. Uh, but as I say, it's had 24 hours to set anyway. But yeah, Esther, and Lenny are looking really shiny. We actually gave both cars a snow foam. Then I hit it with this sort of spray ceramic stuff that I've got that you sort of rinse off and then dry off. And then I went round most of Esther with this other spray on and buff off stuff that I bought from Tesco's yesterday. So uh, yeah, she's looking pretty sharp. And as I say, let's just hope that we get to run her down the quarter mile for the first time since she's had her ST170 lump. So as I've already mentioned, I wanna try and get this video out this evening. Uh, I have edited all the footage uh, apart from this footage, so it's definitely possible. But yeah, I need to get my head in my MacBook. So I am gonna end this video here. Massive thanks to everyone who's tuned in. As always, check the links in the description to follow me on social media. My email address will be down there for anyone who wants to contact me. My website is down there, as well as the Petrolhead Style website. Don't forget to go and check out the new Peugeot 205 GTI and Renault 5 GT Turbo collections that we've just launched at Petrolhead Style. Before I go, I've got to send a massive thanks, as always, to my patrons for your ongoing support. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.